The Nike Alphafly version 1 for me has been the best racing shoe I have owned to date. Setting PBs across multiple distances, it has been an absolutely fantastic shoe. And London Marathon just recently has tipped this thing over the 100 mile mark. But of course, with all things that are great, how is it holding up after 100 miles? Obviously this shoe is expensive and I'm here to take a deeper dive and show you how it's holding up. What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steam Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm excited to share with you guys my thoughts on the Nike Alpha Fly version one after 100 miles. So the long-term performance for some of these racing shoes, for me, it really is key as to value for money because ultimately this was at some stage the most expensive running shoe out there. I paid half price last Christmas and I'm delighted that I did because I have to say now I've got my foot in it, tested it, run in it, got over 100 miles and set multiple PBs in it. It's a shoe I would be prepared to pay full price for because it is just for me the best racing shoe that I have owned. But as I said, these things are an investment and after 100 miles, what is the damage on this shoe and how much longer do I reckon I can get out of it. If you're excited for today guys we're going to be diving into the wear and tear, how I've been using it and if I can continue using it moving forward. So subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, share it with your friends and we'll dive straight in to the wear and tear. So in terms of wear and tear on the upper, things are holding up really well, by the fact that it is rather dirty now and it is no longer as vibrant of a vault colorway as it used to be, it's still doing really good. Upper is still nice and secure, nice and snug, and the lacing in particular, I think when you have lacing styles like this where you don't have sort of external panels for the laces and external loopholes and it's built into the fabric, you can worry that the fabric might stretch or things might get, lose a little bit of tension. This hasn't, it feels really good, same as it did at the start. So I have to say after 124 miles or whatever we are now, it's holding up well on the upper, the midsole. The midsole is still absolutely incredible. I have to say like, with the Vaporfly and I tested it after 100 miles, it felt really, really good. Uh, and I was I was 99% confident that it had so much more life left in it. I'm 100% confident this thing has so much more life left in it. At London Marathon, I was bouncing around the streets, feeling as if I had a brand new pair of Alpha Flies on. Honestly, at 100 miles in this shoe, it really is showing no signs of a lack of bounce. So I have to say, in terms of how the Zoom X is holding up in this thing really, really well. So very impressed uh, with that side of it. The outsole's hold, holding up pretty well as well. Losing a little bit at the top here where we toe off, but again, is that anything major? No, it's not causing any detriment. This is all still looking really, really grippy. I have seen photos of people sharing, depending on where they land, if it's more on the outside where they're wearing through this rubber a bit more and popping the AirPods. I'm nowhere near that at all. Uh, I don't tend to land so much on the outside and roll in. Uh, I am very much more a midfoot striker and just roll through, but less on the outside and roll through a little bit more centrally. However, I do heel strike when I get tired, when my hips sink, as you will see right here. Look at the outside here. I've really put a good bit of wear here. I have a lot of photographic evidence in the second half of London Marathon of me heel striking. Uh, obviously, that's when my back went and I could feel I was sinking into my hips. And this is a good show here as to how the rubber's doing. I think if this was exposed Zoom X here, this would be being churned up quite well. But in terms of this side, this one's not too bad at all. The rest of it's absolutely fine. So the high wearing rubber in the right areas is doing a good job. Overall, I have to say, the wear and tear after 100 miles is really, really good. So how have I been using this shoe to get it up and over the 100 mile mark? Well, it's mainly been races, but we have done some training runs in it as well. I know back when I first got the shoe, I did a couple of test runs. I did some sort of testing back then, and then I exclusively really used it for racing. That was it. I just wanted to put races in it. I've done half marathons. I've done four milers. I think I've done everything in this shoe uh, from four mile up to half marathon. Thereafter, I took a little bit of break in the shoe because I knew I wanted it to be my London marathon shoe. When the 
Alphafly version 2 came into hand and I bought it and I tested it out, I actually knew relatively soon that I wasn't going to use the Alphafly version 2 and I would prefer to stick to the 1. So I did really just shelve this. I uh, didn't want to put any more miles in it, wanted to keep it as fresh as possible. But I did use it a couple of times during the London Marathon training block just for a couple of longer marathon pace efforts just to reaffirm that this was a shoe that I wanted to use. And yep, it just delivered. So we did a 16 mile marathon pace effort in this shoe, uh, longer interval work, should we say. Uh, and again, I did another workout in it prior to that. So I was really, really comfortable that this was gonna be the shoe that I wanted to use. And then of course, the London Marathon itself. So it's had a multitude of racing in the shoe and it's had a sprinkling of training runs. So will I use this shoe moving forwards while I continue to use it? Is it still gonna be my go-to racing shoe? Well, now it has got over the 100 mile mark, I do feel like I can rotate it a little bit more with some of the other shoes that I've got. I've got an abundance of vapor flies, which I need to start really getting through. Um, but I have to say, this is nowhere near done. Let me repeat, this is nowhere near done. At 125 miles, this has so much more life left in it. I, I still have faith in the grip. The, the cushioning feels good. This will still be, my favorite racing shoe. And I think what I would love to do is if there's another Christmas sale on and these things pop up, because right now they have been removed off the Nike website, but they are elsewhere on the internet. You can get them from third party websites. It's gotta be careful where you are getting them from. If they do pop up again on sale, I have the money reserved to put to one side to get myself a second pair. I do want another pair. I'm desperate to get another pair because I know at some stage these will phase out. The V2s will become the norm and I just didn't find the V2s as effective as the V1s, just like Vaporfly version ones. So yeah, there's plenty more life left in this. It's gonna get plenty more usage. I am going into a shorter racing distance season now. So I am gonna be doing some shorter distances. So I will mix these up with the Vaporflies and whatever else that I might have come in and test the Endorphin Pro 3s and anything else that I might have. But for now, this still stands as my number one racing shoe. So there we go, those are my thoughts on the Nike Alphafly version one after 100 miles, a shoe that is holding up really, really well, standing the test of time and gonna get a lot more use over the coming months. But this is the time of the video, just like in previous videos, where we're gonna throw out some comparisons and it's where I need your help. Because as you guys know, I am a UK size 13. So in particular, this is a bit of a crucial point because I can't test all of the racing shoes that you guys can. So let me tell you what I have tested and hopefully we can throw out some comparisons. And I'd love to hear your thoughts comparing some other shoes to the Alpha Flies. Obviously I've tested the Alpha Fly version one and two, the Vaporfly version one and two, and the Endorphin Pro one and three. I've also tested the Hoka Carbon X and the Carbon X2, I think it was, and the Rocket X. But other than that, I am limited on my carbon plated racing shoes that I have tested. So I'm throwing it out there to you guys. Obviously we know now Adidas have finally released some shoes in size 13, so I could try the Pro 3. However, the need for me to try the Pro 3 right now as I'm moving into a shorter distance racing season is less and less because I just don't need a more marathon geared racing shoe at the moment. Of course, we've got the Asics racing shoes, Brooks, we've got the other brands out there that are not producing them in my UK size 13. And I'd love to hear your closest comparison to the Alpha Fly, or actually, if you have a preference over the Alpha Fly, what is your favorite racing shoe? What do you prefer? I'm, I can easily compare the Pro 3 to the Vaporfly version 2 and say that I think I prefer the Pro 3. It's just a nicer, softer, cushier ride. It kind of lends itself a bit more to the Vaporfly version 1. Um, there's some striking similarities there and I do really enjoy it. But of course there are ones I haven't tried and I'd love to hear how you find those other ones that stack up against the Alpha Fly. So that's where you guys come in. I'd love you to drop a comment and let me know how you find those comparisons. And of course, if you've got some decent miles in them as well, let me know how they're holding up as well. That's it for me today though, guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in to the end of the video and also sharing your comparisons. Do drop them down below and let people have a read of what your thoughts are. I'd love to make the comment section a good hub for the community to go and check out your thoughts on the shoes. If you enjoyed today's video guys please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always I'll see you in the next one. Until then.